Welcome back, folks. The House Foreign Affairs Committee will hold a hearing tomorrow on the Biden administration's withdrawal from Afghanistan. In 2021, the U.S. ended two decades of war in that country. The cost? $2.3 trillion. 2,461 American military personnel killed, more than 20,000 Americans wounded. If you remember, the pullout from Afghanistan was chaotic, to say the least, and ISIS suicide bombers killed 13 U.S. service members during the evacuation. Let's bring in our guest to help us walk through what we can expect during tomorrow's hearing. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis is a senior fellow and military expert at Defense Priorities. Lieutenant Colonel, good to have you. The 2021 Afghanistan withdrawal has been thrust back into the spotlight recently. President Biden apparently didn't think any mistakes were made in the withdrawal, according to a new book. A Gold Star parent of a Marine killed in the withdrawal was arrested at Biden's State of the Union address. And tomorrow we'll get to hear from Generals Mark Milley and Kenneth McKenzie. What exactly can we expect from their testimonies tomorrow? Well, I think you can expect a lot like what they gave in their September uh, 2021 testimony, where basically they'll uh, try to absolve themselves from any responsibility. They'll say that they gave their best military advice. It was chaotic. It was, just, you know, uh, the, the enemy had a vote and, and all this. Uh, but that's that's really going to be hiding, I think, many, many errors that were very much predictable, very much called for ahead of time. Uh, and it's not just how the 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 actual withdrawal was handled by the administration, though there's a lot to take issue with there. But this is really the bigger issue that people need to understand. This was 20 years in the making. This was not just something that happened on starting in August of 2021. This was 20 years of failed policies where administration after administration and senior military leader after senior military leader refused to acknowledge the ground truth reality and continued to operate on this fiction that things were getting better when they never were. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So as you said, 20 years in the making, uh, a lot of people who could be held accountable. Are there still unanswered questions when it comes to the withdrawal or is this all about accountability? Well, I think it's about accountability. I mean, it's pretty clear what happened and the way the things went down. There's been lots written on this. Uh, I, I was outspoken for years from 2009 onward after two combat deployments there telling anyone who would listen why things were falling apart and what we needed to do if we wanted to try to have a chance at long-term stability, none of which were done. But but the bottom line is, and you can't get away from this, is that when the in February of 2020, there was a deal made to have the U.S. troops withdraw by a certain date, May 31st, I believe it was, in 2021. And the Pentagon did nothing to prepare for that date, even though the U.S. had dedicated to it. And then the administration, the Biden administration, when they came in, also added to the problems by not making a decision about whether or not they were going to keep to that until it was too late. And then they pushed it back originally to September 11th is what they were shooting for. But the, by then, the die had been cast and uh, the rot of 20 years of failed policy couldn't be contained anymore. And then it collapsed, uh, you know, in dramatic fashion. I want to focus in on accountability here for just a moment. House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Representative Michael McCall, a Republican from Texas, has been a hawk on this issue. He's talked about it plenty of times over the last few years and has said this administration must be held accountable. That was at a post on X. What could accountability look like and is there any precedent for something like this? Well, I, I mean, that's that's really the good question. I mean, what when they say accountability, what do they mean, especially now? Uh, I mean, I'd like to think, it, if nothing else, we can get the truth on the table and see that, you know, why decisions weren't made ahead of time. Why did the Pentagon, even though they knew that the U.S. was committed to this withdrawal date, take no action on that? In fact, we know that because of that September 2021 testimony where the chairman and then Chairman Milley said that, hey, I thought we should have stayed. I thought we should have kept 2,500 troops there, even though the, the plan and the government was committed to getting out on this other date. Why didn't he take action? It's normal military procedure to do contingency planning and to resource the plan, and then you can execute or not execute. But instead, virtually nothing was done. And the thing he said there was that the collapse shocked everyone. He said, we, we have to admit that. And I'm like, you can't be shocked at that if you'd paid any attention at all so that also has to come out in terms of responsibility to be people to say, you said this at one time, but this was known at the time, and then it ended up this way. So we'll see what anybody, I don't, I've don't, never seen anybody held account to, to some of these failures, but at least let's get them, uh, you know, the truth out there.
Before we let you go, Lieutenant Colonel, I'm curious about legacy and um, what our legacy in Afghanistan will be for the years to come. And if there were any lessons learned in how all of this played out from the decades long war to the uh, withdrawal uh, with the last 40 seconds we have left, what, what can you say on that? I can tell you what the lesson should be. The lesson is don't see things on the ground the way you wish they were and then commit a country and armed forces to something that's militarily unattainable. If you can't attain something with the with attainable military objectives and the resources and the time, don't go down that path and instead do something that you have the capacity to do. And there was plenty of off ramps we could have throughout those whole 20 years that could have ended much, much better than it did. That's the point. Be realistic. Mm. Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. You bet. Thank you.